We're live from Bukhart Farm. It is leg two of the US Equestrian Open and I'm with Sarah. Sarah, day one, you're in second place. You're a former winner at the venue. You're taking on one of the greats of, uh, of modern eventing in the US in, in Philip Dutton. It was the two of you guys that we had from a data point of view coming in and it's still the two of you guys after day one and two phases. But because we're not following you on live stream, the goal for me was to try and just get to talk to you, get a little bit of a feel of what's going on, how it feels, what it's like. What is yeah. it like? Well, honestly, I love coming to this venue at uh, Bucart Farm here at Chatt Chattahoochee Hills. It's in Georgia. It's not far from Atlanta, which is really kind of nice because if you've got owners and people coming in, it's a really short drive to come from the airport. It's a beautiful piece of property. They do, they film a lot of movies on this, this property, actually. The Iron Man's house is just over the hill. Oh, wow. But it's a stunning piece of property, beautiful cross country. They do use the, the big hill here, which is nice for us to still have some long events left in our season. I know it, it seems quite late in the season, but in the States, we, we're lucky enough in the South that, you know, the weather is still conducive for us to continue eventing. And so that will still go through to the middle of, middle of November. But uh, yeah. yeah, so the the venue is stunning. The arenas are beautiful. Everything, the stalls, all of it, like it's just a really beautiful place to be. And the show jumping was designed today by Mark Donovan, who is one of our best uh, course designers in the US and honestly one of the better show jumping course designers in, in the world. He trained under the great Richard Jeffrey for years and years and years. So we're really lucky in this country to have people like him and, and Chris Barnard on a regular basis and the show jumping track was beautiful well designed caught out the right number of stuff in different places throughout the course i did have a i did have a pole down but i was very happy with my horse it's his weakest phase and he tried his guts out so i'm delighted Great. i think you know for me this cross country is it's a little friendlier this year we've got a, a new newer course designer to the venue um originally hugh lahore uh, built this whole place up and it, you know, did the, all the courses here. And so I, I always imagine it's quite daunting for a new designer to come in and they always, they probably just want to get a feel for the land first. Um, Dermot, it's just sort of how yeah, I, yeah. I think of that. But, um, but there are three water jumps and uh, we've got it, like I said, the big hill out here. There's certainly things to do. I'm not sitting here saying there's not things to do. It's still a four star, there's still things to do. But yeah, it'd be yeah, a bit, yeah. bit of a friendlier track than something like Morven or something like that. But also, like, that's fine. Like, not everything, as I said, the first year that you're coming out here to feel out the courses, you don't need to, you know, don't need to test everything right out the gate. And he's got a double corner combination out there. He's got, as I said, three waters. He's got a couple narrow things. And so there's certainly enough to do. I think time is going to be a bit of a factor as well. Honestly, I think that will be that will be an issue tomorrow. And uh, as I said um, to you earlier before we started this, we haven't had a ton of rain here. And so they've been really great about spiking the ground, but that's another factor. It's a bit warm and the ground is a bit firm. So some people might decide to be a little bit quieter tomorrow. Let's bring people up to date a little bit just with scores at the moment. Uh, yeah. As you say, you had one down. You were leading um, with Rock Phantom, a big dressage test. Um, just to round up, what were you, 32.1 um, ahead yes. of Philip? Yeah, he was 33.2. He jumped clear, so he's just ahead now, but um, what's that, about three marks, 2.9 marks ahead of you at the moment? Well, for fortunately, he's a pretty slow rider, so we should be okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing to worry about. Um, <laughs> But uh, I suppose uh, you two out in front, uh, Christina he uh, Henriksen with Cisco's Color Z uh, just behind you, 36.9. Uh, Katie Masinek, uh, 39.7. You know, front front four at the moment. Um, you were at Morvern uh, from a commentary point of view in terms of the US Equestrian Open and also, um, also Whitrock Phantom. Uh, who had a big run there. Where are you or how are you feeling in advance of tomorrow? Uh, two questions, I suppose. You're looking at it from a course point of view, as you've said, probably mm -hmm. a different challenge on the cross country to Morven. But equally then from a series point of view, this is a venue that you've won at before. This is a mm -hmm. venue that you've won at with Rock Phantom before. It's a, it's a level of the sport that you're hugely experienced at and that you've had a number of, you know, big podium, big top five finishes at. Um, 
the open is something that is going to be appealing i think in terms of your your profile and your horses but it begins i think tomorrow in terms of getting getting points on the board Oh, a hundred percent. The open is really, really exciting. It's going to be a um, load, load of things for all of us riders with our four star horses to do. And I love that it's something that's going around the country. I love that there's so many different venues involved that we can follow our horses or, you know, across the country, but for rock phantom. Yes. I, he also had surgery, um, he had surgery on his May and I've been slowly building him back up because he had to learn, he had, uh, like a bit of a compression between C6 and seven. And it's a relatively new surgery. So he had to kind of learn to make sure that he could move. He was hanging a front leg a little bit, his left front leg a little bit. And I like to talk about it openly because I think it's something that maybe some people might not have thought about. I certainly didn't think about it. And um, he had that surgery and he's really changed a huge amount. It's helped him a lot. Okay. But it took a while to build him back up to this level. Um, he did win, as you said, he did win it at Morven quite well. And I went ahead and put my foot down at Morven. I am planning, even though, you know, I'm not going to be doing a four long. The horse doesn't need to do a four long this season. Um, he already has enough of those qualifiers. I actually wanted to test out. So I'm not going to be hanging about. I am going to go ahead and give this a go. He feels really good. And if there's a moment where I think I need to go a bit slower, that's fine. I'll, I'll do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to read my horse on the day. But he does feel good right now. And my plan is not to hang about. And so, And I think it's a good track for, like you talked about, Christina Hendrickson. That horse also was in the three-star, uh, was second actually in the three-star at Morven. This is this horse's second advance. And I think that she... I think that horse will jump around nicely as well. And I think it's a good event for this horse's first four-star short. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting profile. We saw a little bit of it at um, at Morvern as well in that very first qualifier of, of the Open where you could see there's two types of profiles coming. I mean, Philip and Julian are obviously experienced at the level, but... Um, and we saw that maybe with, with uh, Emily Bashir, who went on to win in Morvern with, yeah. with Rio de Janeiro. That was cool. That yeah, was you, cool. You've got that experience at the level. And equally, then you have multiple profiles who are stepping up into the level or are coming back from time off. You know, yep. you've got it's a really mixed level, which is going to make tomorrow interesting. Yeah. No, I, I, think, I think so, too. Thank you. Do you do see the, the spider behind me, right? Yeah, I was looking at it. I looking at it. It's I did want very... to pick up the Halloween spider. I think it's quite a cool jump, so I didn't want to do that. No, thank you. I, I will be. I will be putting my foot down a bit. I do honestly love to just sort of canter around sometimes. So I need to give myself a kick up the bum and not do that. So that is not the plan tomorrow. We're gonna to move. We're gonna move faster than a canter. Okay. Yeah, you're looking at uh, like my my reckoning on it, Sarah. Is you're looking at about. 200 points over the course of a season that it's going to take to win a big share of that 50k prize yes. pot in terms of yes. the series but equally i think a critical point point um is ensuring that you get the place points to be able to be in that reckoning for the big big payday that could be available at morvern park in the four star long for, for the final i think when you come to a class here which has less starters, the goal is absolutely to take advantage of the moment. Yeah. Uh, you're so close to the lead here. Um, so look, we'll be... So should I go give be... Philip a kick now or should <laughs> I... Going out like whenever you see him, you, I'll leave that... It's kind of tough, but I don't know, I could sneak up on him. He's, he's smaller mm. than me. I think you're, uh, I think you're well able. I think you can do it all on the field tomorrow, but uh, yeah, no, best of luck. We'll be following. Thank thanks for taking the time today. We really appreciate it. And uh, no, we'll talk you. to you after thanks the show. Asking. And uh, it is beautiful. So wish we had it on, on live stream, but we'll take some videos and make sure we share them. Super. Thanks, Sarah. I appreciate it.